Hi, I'm Kelsey from RoughandTumbleFarmhouse.com, and we had a calf born. So in this video, you're going to get to see a full live calf birth, and I'll tell you a little bit about the process of getting ready for her to arrive, and what I did to assist, which was pretty much nothing. Our main milk cow, Juneberry, she was due two days ago on Sunday, and she actually had her baby on her due date, which is pretty cool. Of course, it was just barely above freezing. We had a whiteout blizzard that day. It's the end of April here in Minnesota, but that's not uncommon. I probably won't ever breed for calving this early again. Normally we calve in June, but I was actually trying to plan around our own family planning and wanted to milk as long as possible before we had our own baby. Uh, and so that's why I bred a little bit earlier so we get six, month, six months of milking, but I'm not gonna do that again because I just don't like dealing with this cold weather stuff. And the calf, she's doing fine, but she's still a little weaker than I'd like just because it's been so cold. And I haven't had them outside yet because it's been very windy, very cold, very wet. So we're on day two of just hanging out in the barn. A little bit of help finding the teat still. And I think as she just gets stronger, she she won't have such a problem with that. Um, typically you don't want to interfere too much with their nursing, but just the fact that she's just still a little bit weak, a little bit lethargic. My main concern is that she gets as much of her mom's good milk as possible. And so I'm just helping kind of tuck the, oh, <laughs> where is she? There you are. Just kind of helping her get the teat in her mouth to make sure she drinks. And as she gets bigger and stronger, she'll figure it out on her own. But this morning I got her kind of set up on a teat, went and did some other chores. By the time I came back, I think she had gotten unlatched, was frustrated, and just gone and laid down again. So uh, enjoy the video of our little girl being born. So here you can see Juneberry's water bag is really starting to protrude. This is about a half hour after I brought her into the barn. It was kind of a late whiteout blizzard we had here in Minnesota. Just above freezing, really windy, damp. I had gone to feed one of our bottle kids and noticed that June had a little bit of mucus coming out and that she also was just kind of listless and sniffing around the ground but not really eating which are all signs of a baby soon to come and i was right and so when you see a water bag like this you're pretty much going to have a baby on the ground within an hour i'd say and i don't have any audio uh, playing because it's mostly me and my husband trying to shush our toddler who was there and they ended up having to leave the barn because june berry just really wasn't into it oh there you could see just a little bit of the feet starting to stick out through the water bag but animals just like with people their labors can stall if they're uncomfortable at all and so having those two leave the barn as much as it would have been great for my husband to see the birth it really was just making her uncomfortable you could tell every time my daughter would squeal or make a cow sound because she was excited to be there here you see june it was just kind of sniffing around a little bit in the hay almost kind of looking for a baby that isn't there quite yet but so that's something that you'll see too with cows so here, just a little bit later, the water bag actually breaks, which you don't catch on camera, but you can see it's just getting kind of looser and floppier. Uh, and so once it breaks, then you're going to have a baby very quickly. So also very common is they just might get up and eat. And you can see, though, how her tail is still really arched. That's because there's a baby right there ready to come out. But she decided to have a little bit of a snack. So here she's laying down, chewing her cut a little bit. And it was just about maybe a minute after I got my husband and daughter to leave the barn, she gave up on the hay and laid down and was ready to have her babies again. And so June is really familiar with me. I've been, I was there when she was born and, uh, you know, milked her for years. So she was comfortable with me being there. So here, obviously, the hooves are starting to come out. Of course, she chooses to lay in the darkest area of the birthing stall and right against a wall. Her mother actually gave birth to her in a very similar way in a dark corner of the barn pressed against the wall. So it's a little bit frustrating, but we, we did just fine anyway. And so it's really good when you see two hooves sticking out like that. That's a really good sign that things should be, hopefully, uh, in the correct position. Babies, when they come out of... Their mothers, they come out sort of in a diving position with both feet forward and then their nose kind of outstretched along their legs and pointed towards their toes. And it's not uncommon for them to just kind of take a little break during pushing. That's nothing that's to be worried about. But again, once that water bag breaks, you really expect to see a baby out within an hour. If you haven't, there might be a positioning issue. There, June had a really big contraction. 
And here she's starting to get down to business. She's a very quiet birther. I mean, she makes kind of pushing a little bit of grunting sounds. But, I mean, I think I said every swear word in the book when I was giving birth to my daughter. And so it's very impressive that, that they manage prey animals like this manage to be very quiet when they have their babies, which they have to do. And so here she's just readjusting a little. Unfortunately, you know, she's got her tail and her rear end just pushed against that wall which isn't super helpful, but still she manages here in just a little bit. We'll see the, the jaw starting to come out. There you see the nose starting to poke out the underside of the baby's jaw. This is the first time Juneberry's had a baby lying down. Her previous two calves, she birthed them while she was standing, which is perfectly fine, though it's shocking to see them kind of flop out. <laughs> and once the baby is mostly out here, I do um, pull it the rest of the way out and then just get out of the way because the baby's kind of wedged against the wall there uh, in that position. So here I just kind of grab the baby. It was almost completely out and just pull it out of the way and then I get out of the way uh, quickly <laughs> because Juneberry is already up and ready to be mom. So here she's given her lots of good love and kisses and I'm sorry it's so dark and my shadow's not helping much but I just am making sure that the bedding is cleared away from the baby's nose that there's no obvious gunk or anything in there to make sure she's getting some really good first breaths. So here's what it looked like outside, snowy, cold, and that's why we were indoors. Here we are a while later, I actually ended up using some old diaper cloths and a blow dryer to try and get the calf dry. She had a really hard time getting warmed up. She even wore one of my vests for a while. Uh, but here she is doing just fine nursing away with mom. So in terms of prep that I did, I really do a lot less prep for my cows than I do for my goats. I find that goats have complications or mispositioned babies a lot more than cows do. So for Juneberry, pretty much all I did is make sure I have some molasses water on hand to give her when the baby is born. I also do have uh, you know, an antiseptic lube that I can use if I do need to reach in and feel for a calf positioning. Moving a calf is a lot harder than moving a goat, so if a calf was mispositioned, I probably would have just called our vet and had him come out to take care of it. Other than that, I also have a, like a big um, gun. It looks like a caulking gun and you get something called CMPK, which is a supplement you can give if they do get milk fever. And I spoke with my vet, he was out to dehorn our goat just a couple days before Juneberry had her calf, and so I checked in with him about you know, treating milk fever and watching for milk fever, and he said he rarely has to deal with it anymore because of the CMPK pace that you give, and if, as long as you give it right when you start to see symptoms, he said that cows usually snap back just fine, and normally you give another one 12 hours later, he said. So just having those things on hand for her is really all I did to prep. Otherwise, she did it all by herself, and I just got to be here and watch. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the calf birth. It was exciting and got to be here for it and I was so excited I was able to film it and share it with all you. Uh, in terms of a name, I'm sure you wanna know, my dad suggested Butterscotch and so that's what we are gonna call her is Butterscotch. And she will be for sale next spring. That's something that was kind of my goal with jerseys is I wanted to raise jerseys that could be family milk cows or go to grass-based dairy so that is in the cards for this sweet little girl is that eventually she'll be going for a new home hopefully on a homestead like one of yours so thanks so much for watching and always tune in here for one new video every single week on the youtube channel and two blog posts over on the blog about farming family food and fortitude here at our rough and tumble farmhouse